In the four billion-ish years that life has existed on planet Earth, it's accomplished some pretty astounding things. So far in this series, we've seen living cells emerge from lifeless conditions. We've met microscopic beings that produce the first traces of oxygen in our atmosphere. We've watched those cells evolve, multiply, and diversify into the microbes that would clear a path for more complex life to flourish. We've explored the plants that provide life with nourishment and shelter, and the fungi that recycle organic matter back into the food web after an organism dies. One of the most beautiful aspects of life on our planet is the countless different directions that life has taken on its quest to carry its genes on to the next generation. Some of the most impressive directions that life has taken have been forged by members of the animal kingdom. Animals are the great innovators, able to feel and sense their environment in ways that other organisms had never done before. Through a mix of competition, cooperation, and sexual selection, animals have evolved to see, smell, hear, move, run, climb, swim, fly, think, and gain levels of consciousness that would allow them to dominate the land and eventually explore the universe. Where did all of this diversity come from? How did it start? And how did animals become so successful? As we learned earlier in the series, we classify organisms based on the point in time at which they diverged from their common ancestor. So what biologists had to do was find our most ancient common ancestor and see at what point in the evolutionary timeline did they diverge. To find out, we have to go back into a time when all life on Earth existed in the ocean, a little over 600 million years ago during a chapter in our planet's history that we call the Ediacaran Period. The organisms that evolved during the Ediacaran Period created the templates for animals that we see on Earth today. This was an experimental time in animal evolutionary history, with many different body plans taking shape. From the data that's been gathered from observing the fossil record, genome sequencing, and other biomarker evidence, it's thought that the first true animals were none other than the humble sponges. Sponges are unique to say the least. They're multicellular animals that completely lack a nervous system, tissues, and organs. And for the most part, they have an asymmetrical body plan, meaning that if you cut one in half, the two halves would look completely different. That last part there is important to remember, because every animal going forward is going to have some sort of symmetrical body plan, meaning that if you cut one into halves or thirds or quarters, each section would be a mirror image of another. While the lack of body symmetry seems bizarre, it clearly worked well for the sponges, since they still exist today over 600 million years later. Another body plan that seemed to work out well over evolutionary history is radial symmetry. Radially symmetrical animals are arranged in a circular fashion around a central point, sort of like a pizza that's cut into equally sized slices. The first animals to exhibit radial symmetry were the members of the phylum Cnidaria better known as the jellyfish, the corals, and the anemones. And just like the sponges, these body plans are still in use today, over 580 million years later. But evolutionary experiments aren't always so successful, especially in those early years. A great example of this is Charnia, a thin, feather-shaped animal on the seafloor that obtained energy by absorbing nutrients directly from the water, a body plan that seemed to work for about 20 million years or so before fading into extinction. Those 20 million years are referred to by experts today as the Chronicles of Charnia. That might be the stupidest thing I've ever said. It's unclear exactly what caused Charnia to die off, but the prevailing theory is that they were outcompeted by a group of animals that evolved a new system for obtaining nutrients. They began moving. During the Ediacaran, a third successful body plan evolved that would completely change the way that animals would interact with their environment and with each other bilateral symmetry. Bilaterian animals were different from sponges, jellyfish, coral, and anemone because they had a clear front and back end as well as a symmetrical left and right side. All animals living on land and the vast majority of animals living in the ocean are bilaterally symmetrical. After the Ediacaran period ended, a new era was ushered in by the rapid and competitive evolution of bilaterian animals. This is known as the Cambrian period. It lasted from 451 million years ago to 485 million years ago. During this time, diversification happened at such an incredible pace that we call it the Cambrian Explosion. And this is the time when animals with bilateral symmetry stepped into the spotlight. Having a front end with a mouth to obtain food opened many new doors for animal evolution. The sense of smell and sight, the growth of fins and legs, the 
ability to take minerals from the ocean in the water and turn them into teeth and into shells and exoskeletons. The Cambrian gave us the first arthropods, animals like trilobites that developed some of the first exoskeletons and complex eyes to help them avoid being eaten by larger predatory animals like Anomalocaris. A one meter long arthropod that evolved large claw-like appendages in the front of its mouth to help it capture prey. The Cambrian explosion also resulted in the first chordates, animals like jawless fish that had flexible rods along their backs that would eventually set the stage for vertebrates. As time went on, animal life continued to evolve and diversify. The Ordovician period gave us large cephalopods like Orthoceris, massive predatory arthropods like the two and a half meter long sea scorpions, and the first fish with jaws. The Silurian period saw the first bony fishes, the first sharks, and the first arthropods crawling out of the sea to dine on the primitive plants that had begun to colonize the land. The Devonian period gave the planet an even greater diversity of fish and arthropods as well as the first insects and amphibians. A massive increase in atmospheric oxygen during the Carboniferous period allowed some of the amphibians to spend more time out of the water and then eventually evolve into the first reptiles animals that were tough enough to survive in dry conditions and lay eggs outside of the water. This adaptation came in handy during the Permian period, where they diversified and eventually dominated the planet in place of the amphibians. The Triassic period saw some reptiles return to the sea as plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, while others took to the skies as pterosaurs, the first vertebrates capable of flight. Early dinosaurs first appeared in the late Triassic, then grew to enormous sizes and dominated the land during the Jurassic period, where early mammals were starting to diversify. The late Jurassic was home to the first avian dinosaurs, which would outlast their dinosaur cousins and survive to the modern age as birds. Birds and mammals diversified to form many new groups during the Cretaceous period, as dinosaurs like T. rex, Velociraptor, and Triceratops ruled the land, and giant marine reptiles like Mosasaur ruled the sea. Then suddenly, boom! The Cretaceous period ends with an asteroid impact in the Gulf of Mexico and three quarters of animal species went extinct, and the dinosaurs and giant reptiles vanished. The small, specialized mammals that survived this event became larger and more diverse during the Paleogene period to fill the many voids left behind by the dinosaurs. Bats took to the skies, cetaceans entered the sea, and primates ruled the treetops until the Neogene period where a group of primates called the Great Apes appeared, and a few of them returned to the forest floor to explore the planet as their brains rapidly increased in size and complexity. Those apes continued to evolve, until eventually, one of them started a YouTube channel with weekly videos exploring every living branch on the tree of animal life. This ape will be uploading new videos every Monday starting on January 4th, 2021, with a video about our most ancient ancestors, the sponges. For updates and announcements on this ridiculous project that I've decided to undertake and to find out how you can get involved, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Miller's Wildlife. If you've enjoyed this video or the nine previous videos in this series, make sure to let me know in the comments down below and subscribe to my channel while you're down there. And if you're feeling super kind, tell your friends and family about what I do and see if they want to subscribe also. I'll be back to weekly uploads next month, but until then, stay curious stay connected, and never stop evolving. I'll see you on January 4th. Thank you all so, so much.